Welcome back to this tutorial series on building the classic card game Solitaire with Phaser 3. If you missed the previous videos, there will be links in the video description to the source code to this point, as well as the clear source code for this video. There will also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up, so let's get started. Alright, so with our core logic in place, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to work on making some UI improvements to our game. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and update our title scene so we have a nice splash screen to show the player uh, when they land on our page. Then we're going to add in some transitions so that way we can transition smoothly uh, to our game scene. So go ahead and do this. Let's jump over to our title scene. So let's comment out our code here where we go ahead and start our game scene right away. What should happen is now when our game refreshes, we should just see our gray background uh, since we're still in our title scene. All right, so for our title scene, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to go ahead and update our background so it's black. And then we're going to go ahead and add in a couple of our images here uh, to our scene. As we get started, the first thing we'll do is let's go ahead and add in our image for our title. And to do this, we're going to go into this.add, and we'll do that image. This is going to allow us to add an image game object to our scene. And so for our X and Y position, we want this to be centered in our screen. And so to do that, we're going to reference our scale manager. And so by doing this, we can go ahead and grab the width of our current scene, and we'll be able to divide that by two to go ahead and grab our center point. Now for our height, is we're just going to do 100 pixels down from the top of our screen, and now we need our assets. So we're going to go ahead and use our title image uh, asset, and we'll add that to our scene. So now right away, we should see our solitaire text appear in our scene. Now we want to go ahead and add our text to tell the player to go ahead and click somewhere in our scene to go ahead and start. So we'll add another image game object, and we're going to store this one in a variable. So we do const, we're going to do click to start image, and I'm just going to copy this here, go ahead and paste it. And so now for our position, uh, we're going to go ahead and center this as well. But then for our y value, we're going to do 250. Now we're going to go ahead and update this to be click to start. Go ahead and save, and we should see our other image. And now what we want to do is when the player clicks somewhere in our scene, we want to go ahead and transition to our game scene. And so we'll basically do with this logic here once we have that click event. What we need to do is we need to use our input manager, and we're going to go ahead and listen for input on it. And so we'll do this.input, and we'll do the once method. And so for this, this will be our phaser, our input, our events, and we want to go ahead and do pointer down. And so this will be our click event. And now when this happens, we'll go ahead and do our logic for starting our next scene. That's just going to take this. We'll move inside here and get rid of our comment. Go ahead and save. All right, so now if we go ahead and click on our canvas element, we should be taken to our next scene. All right, so the last thing we'll do is let's go ahead and update our background. And so we're going to go ahead and do a black background. And so to do this, we're just going to go ahead and use a simple rectangle. And so we'll do that right above where we create our images. Let's do this.add, do rectangle. Now for our position, we want to be in the top left corner. Now we have to take up the full uh, game scene. We'll use our scale manager. Let's go ahead and grab our width. We'll do the same thing for our height on our rectangle. And now for our color, we'll do 0x, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and we'll do one for our fill alpha. So if we save, we should see our rectangles appearing, uh, but we need to go ahead and update our origin. So for our origin, we're going to do set origin, and let's go ahead and do zero to do the top left corner. Much better. All right, so to make our game a little less static, what we're gonna do is we're gonna update our click to start image here to go ahead and flash uh, slowly on our screen. And so to go ahead and create simple animations like this, we can create what's called a tween and phaser. And so a tween allows us to manipulate properties on our game object to be any value based on some type of duration and a type of ease. And tweens that we create are gonna be stored in what's called the tween manager uh, in phaser. And so one example of this is if we wanna go ahead and animate our game object, to move across your scene, we could go ahead and use a tween to go ahead and do this. We would update our X property to go ahead and move our object along our scene. And we can control this animation by setting the duration, so how long it would take to complete that animation. We can also do things like a delay if we want it to go ahead and wait before it starts moving. And so for our use case, we won't be doing our X property. Instead, we we'll want to target our alpha property, and we go ahead and have it go between 0 and 1, so then that way it's not visible to visible. Then we'll go ahead and repeat that from 1 to 0. And then that way it kind of has this nice flashing effect. So go ahead and do this. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do this. We'll go ahead and do tweens. And this is going to reference our tween manager plugin. And on our tween manager, we can use the add method to go ahead and create a brand new tween. And then go ahead and add it to our manager. And so for the add method, this is going to expect a configuration object of the tween that we want to go ahead and build. And so for your tweens, the first thing we need to do is specify our targets of our tween. So what game objects uh, do we want to modify? And so for this, this is going to be our click to start image uh, that we created above. And then next, you need to go ahead and specify the properties that you want to go ahead and modify. So for our use case, we want to go ahead and modify our alpha property. And if, for example, I wanted to modify our Y property, we would do the same thing, we just do Y. 
And so what phaser is going to do is when it gets this tween configuration, it's going to look for these properties. And depending on what properties are set, it's going to go ahead and modify those based on the configuration. And so when we specify our configuration for these properties, we can do one of two things. Uh, the first is we can just provide a value. And then what phaser will do is it's going to go ahead and start animating from whatever value is currently at and then animate to the value that we provide. And so if this was not visible, so if the L flow is set to zero and we provide one here, then phaser would animate this from zero to one. Another way you can do this, you can do an object, then you can specify your fields, your start, your from, and your to field. And what this allows you to do is you, now you can manually set those values and anytime this tween will start playing, it's gonna go ahead and use the start and from fields to go ahead and start the animation from that position. And so we'll go ahead and manually specify these this way. By saying our start and our from are at one, that means our alpha will start at the value of one, and we wanna go ahead and animate it to the value of zero. And so this is gonna give it the effect of having it fade out, uh, so then that way it's transparent. Next, and specify a duration. So this is how long in milliseconds we want this animation to last for. And so we're just gonna go do a thousand. So it should take one second to do this animation. Then we're gonna specify a repeat. And so what repeat allows you to do is you can specify the number of times you want this animation to repeat. And by doing negative one, it'll repeat indefinitely. So if we go ahead and save, what you should see right away is now our screen, it starts flashing. And what's happening is our game object starts at one for our alpha, takes one second to get to zero, and then it automatically repeats and start doing our tween all over again. And so for your tween configuration, there are other properties you can go ahead and set. It allows you to do all kinds of different things. Like one example is you can introduce a delay between each of your repeating animations here, and you can create some really neat uh, effects. One last thing we are gonna do for our tween animation is we're gonna add the yo-yo property. And what this will do is this will allow us to create a very smooth animation where it's going to animate from one to zero. And once it reaches the end, it's gonna go ahead and play the animation back, but in reverse. So now we get this very nice effect here where it's so, it looks a little bit more slow. And we can see we're animating from one to zero and then zero to one. Versus before, if we have this at false, which is the default value, we start at one, we go to zero and it repeats. And that's why we have that blinking effect like this. All right, so one last change we're gonna make is we're gonna go ahead and add a scene transition from our title scene to our game scene. And so currently if the player clicks on our canvas element here, we automatically jump to our next scene and it can be a little bit jarring. Instead, what we wanna do is we wanna introduce this nice fade effect. So that way we click, kind of have this fade out, and then we go to our next scene, we'll have a fade in effect to complete our transition. And so we can do this relatively pretty easily uh, with some of the built-in methods on our phaser camera option. And so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go ahead and update our logic here for our pointer down event to not start our scene right away, but instead we're gonna go ahead and have that fade out transition. And so to go ahead and do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna reference our cameras manager. So we'll do this.cameras. Next, we wanna go ahead and grab our main camera. All right, so in, in Phaser, each scene has at least one camera. And generally this is called the main camera and stored on this property here. And your camera is the way in which all things are rendered to our canvas element. And it kind of renders out like what's visible to this camera. And so there's a bunch of different things you can do to your camera to create some really cool effects. Like you could zoom out and that's going to make everything look up smaller as in your camera is like zooming away from your canvas element. You could zoom in, you can move it, you can have it follow game objects in your scene and much more. Uh, but what's uh, important for us is your cameras have some built-in special effects that we can utilize uh, for creating these uh, scene transitions. And the one we're going to go ahead and take a look at is going to be this fade out uh, method. What this method allows us to do is create a fade out effect where we can specify our duration and the color that we like to use for our transition. And so in this method, what we'll do is we need to specify how long we want this effect to last for. So the number of milliseconds, so we'll do one second. Next, we need to provide our color. And so your color is broken up into the R, G, and B. So red, green, and blue. And you can provide a value from zero to 255. And so we're just gonna go ahead and do zero, zero, zero. And so this is gonna give us the color black. And then so next we can specify an optional callback. And so this callback is going to be invoked for every frame of the uh, animation effect that we're creating for the fade effect. And so for this, since it's being invoked a number of times, a few of the arguments that we're going to receive are the first one's going to be the camera that the effect is being applied to. The next is going to be progress. And so progress is going to be a value between zero and one 
reflecting how close we are to finishing uh, this effect. And so what we want to do is we want to wait for our progress to be finished, and then we'll go ahead and transition to our next scene. And so what we'll do is we'll do an if statement. We'll say if our progress does not equal one, then we just want to go ahead and return from our callback. Otherwise, we want to go ahead and start our scene. So now if we go ahead and save, what we should be able to do if we click our canvas element, we'll see now we have that nice fade out effect as we transition to our next scene. And so to complete our transition, we need to create a fade in effect on our game scene. And so go ahead and do that. Let's jump over to our game scene. And what we'll do is we'll come to the top of our create method and we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and create our fade effect. And so for this scene, we're just going to do and reference our cameras manager. Let's go ahead and use the main camera. And now we want to go ahead and do fade in. And so for this, we're just going to go ahead and specify 1000. Uh, so it'll be 1000 milliseconds for our fade in effect. And since we're skipping our RG and B, uh, it's going to automatically default to do in black. And for this one, we don't need to wait until the transition is completed. Uh, we'll go ahead and have our code automatically run for us. Uh, so what we'll go ahead and do is now if we go ahead and click, we'll see we transition to our game scene. And we have this really nice fade effect uh, happening now. All right, so with our scene transitions in place, the last thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and update our background color for our game. And so currently our background color is this light gray color. We're just going to change this to be a nice green color so it kind of matches old solitaire type games. And so what we'll go ahead and do is let's go into our main.ts file. And so here is where we specify our default background color for all of our scenes. And we're going to go ahead and change this to 387F3C. So now if we go ahead and save, we should have our black on our title scene from our rectangle. And now we have our nice green color uh, in our game scene. All right, so with those last changes, that actually wraps up this tutorial. Uh, so as a reminder, there's a link in the description of the video to complete source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please send the links on your screen now.